Good morning students. Uh, today in this video, I'm going to present about a topic uh, from class 9th and chapter 5 that is fundamentals unit of life. You know, in this particular uh, chapter, we basically talk about cell. So let's just begin and let's see what basically uh, is there in this video. So uh, when we talk about uh, the particular chapter that is cell, a lot of things are there, a uh, different parts of cells are there. It is membrane, it is nucleus, it is cytoplasm and cell organelles. In this particular video, I'm basically going to focus on semi-autonomous organelles which are present in a eukaryotic cell. So basically, we'll focus on semi-autonomous organelle. So what is this semi-autonomous organelle? Semi stands for half autonomous, which has certain control over themselves, right? So semi-autonomous organelle, when we talk about with respect to the cell, these are the organelles which are basically self-replicating in nature. They are able to duplicate itself whenever required so they are not dependent on the entire cell when it will divide then only these organelles will divide no this is not the case so these organelles they have power of replicating themselves whenever needed whether the whole cell is being duplicated or not so they are self-replicating organelles and why they are able to replicate themselves because they have their own DNA and ribosomes. So we will see what kind of ribosomes and what all other things are present other than DNA. Due to the presence of DNA and ribosomes, they are able to prepare some of their proteins uh, which are needed for their division and that's how they are able to replicate themselves so did you understand so this is about a semi-autonomous organelles if we talk about eukaryotic cell where cell organelles are basically present how many types of semi-organelles semi-autonomous organelles are there two one is mitochondria Another is chloroplast. So we have these two organelles which are called semi-autonomous organelle. That means these are the two organelles. They have their own DNA as well as their own ribosomes. Okay, so let's just see uh, mitochondria and chloroplast in little detail. So the first organelle which we are going to talk about is mitochondria. So mitochondria, you know, mitochondria is basically associated with energy synthesis. So it is the site for energy formation and it is present in all aerobic organism. Aerobic organisms means organisms which need oxygen for their survival. So mitochondria is present in all kind of aerobic organisms including plants and animals. That means in our cell, in plant cells, in protozoan cells um, itself. So the mitochondria is present. So we all uh, consist of mitochondria in our cell. But there are certain cells which lack mitochondria. For example, all the prokaryotes. So all the prokaryotes, whether it is blue-green algae, whether it is other bacteria, they do not have mitochondria. And there are certain eukaryotic cells present in our body itself which does not have mitochondria. For example, RBCs. Uh, other than that, in plant cells, we see a sieve tubes. So sieve cells, they also does not contain mitochondria. Okay, so uh, there are certain exceptions there in eukaryotic cells where you can say that mitochondria is absent. Okay. When we talk about mitochondria, uh, functions of mitochondria, I have already told you that it is related to synthesis of energy and because it is the site of energy synthesis, it is called powerhouse of the cell and the energy which is being formed in mitochondria, it is stored in the form of ATP adenosine triphosphate and this ATP is called energy currency of the cell because for any sort of active processes which take place inside our body we we need to spend some currency and what is that currency we need to spend the energy so it is acting as a currency when we talk about our body itself 
So energy currency is ATP, adenosine triphosphate. So now we'll talk about the structure of mitochondria. We have all we have discussed about its feature. We have discussed about its um, uh, functions. So let's see the structure now. Uh, this is the diagram of mitochondria. Very common structure. You must have seen it already. And if you notice, a lot of things are given in this particular diagram. Uh, as you can see, that the mitochondria it's a double membranous organelle, and you see it it has outer membrane and inner membrane. Between the outer membrane and inner membrane, there is a place called intermembrane space. Other than that, you'll also be able to see that the DNA is present in uh, mitochondria it has its own uh, ribosomes it has matrix itself and there is one more uh, thing which is present in mitochondria that is oxisomes so we will talk about all these things in little detail now yes so first thing is about the morphology of mitochondria. If I talk about morphology, how it looks like, right? So uh, mitochondria, usually you will find that they have sausage shape, okay? So usually mitochondria is sausage shaped, but that doesn't mean it is the only shape of mitochondria present in organisms. In different organisms, we can see different types or different shapes of mitochondria. Mitochondria can be there in sausage shape, it can be there in disc-like structure, it can be a... Uh, oval it can be filamentous it can be in the form of ring so there are different shapes of mitochondria present in different organisms if i talk about its size uh, its diameter is around one to five micrometers its uh, length is around four one to four micrometers and the thickness is 0 0.2 to one micrometer so that is about its dimensions and very important thing is its components. Just now we have seen in the diagram. So all those things are the component of mitochondria. So the very first thing is its membranes. Membranes means here uh, we talk about uh, its boundary. So mem membranes are basically forming a boundary of mitochondria and keep it separate from the cytoplasm as well as from the other organelles. And the membranes are double so it's a double membranous organelle where we have the outer membrane as well as the inner membrane outer membrane if we, if we talk about features of outer membrane it is a smooth and freely permeable which allow uptake of substrates and release of atp if we talk about inner membrane so so if I talk about inner membrane, inner membrane is semi-permeable in nature, just like plasma membrane, it is also semi-permeable. And this particular membrane has a lot of enzymes in it. So they are rich in enzymes and uh, inner membrane is generally uh, present into numerous infolds and these infoldings are called cristae. This cristae, it greatly increases the surface area of mitochondrion. It is actually the inner membrane of mitochondria where a lot of enzymes are present and these enzymes are basically participating in respiratory processes. So the cristae, when it increases the surface area, it basically increases the functionality of mitochondria. Next thing what is present in mitochondria is oxisomes, what I was talking about. So inside the inner part of the inner membrane lollipop shaped particles are present and these uh, particles are basically called oxisomes this oxisome consists of two parts one is its head another is its base the head is also called f1 particle and the base is also called f0 particle so did you understand so we also say uh, f1 f0 particles so they basically forms oxisome and this oxisomes basically has the atpase activity that means they are concerned with atp formation so whenever hydrogen ion or h plus ion it crosses from these um, uh, oxisomes uh, uh, atp is being produced so oxisomes are basically related to ATP synthesis and the next part of mitochondrial structure is its matrix. 
what is this matrix the wide space present between the cristae is filled with certain fluid dense fluid and this dense fluid is called mitochondrial matrix where a lot of mitochondrial reactions are going on this matrix consists of its dna it consists of its rna it also consists of 70s ribosome you need to understand here though mitochondria is present in eukaryotic cell it has ribosomes which are equivalent to or which are similar to prokaryotes right and somewhere the 70s ribosomes uh, and and the presence of dna it it gives a hint that somewhere the mitochondria has originated from the prokaryotes itself or they may be prokaryote itself right so they also have a 70s type of ribosomes which are same as prokaryotes and they also have certain proteins they have ions fibers enzymes and all other things which are generally pre present uh, in the matrix so these things are present in the matrix of mitochondria so that's all about the structure of mitochondria functions we have already discussed that it is a powerhouse of the cell and uh, they store ATP and the ATP is called energy currency of the cell so that's all about mitochondria let's talk about the next organelle which is called chloroplast so like mitochondria chloroplast is also a kind of semi autonomous organelle that means this organelle also consists of its own DNA and ribosomes and by which they can synthesize their uh, proteins and they can replicate whenever required so you know that a uh, chloroplast it's a very common type of plastid and this particular plastid consists of chlorophyll so due to the presence of chlorophyll you know that photosynthesis is uh, plants are capable of carrying out photosynthesis so the chloroplasts are basically present in plant cells they are also present in green protist like euglena and they are also present in certain prokaryotes that is cyanobacteria which we also called blue green algae they are actually a kind of bacteria cyanobacteria or blue green algae they are also a kind of bacteria chloroplasts are basically absent in animal and fungal cells so animal cells fungal cells uh, and even the protozoan cells uh, there the chloroplasts are uh, not present so what is the function of uh, chloroplast so as we know that chloroplast consists of chlorophyll which is a green pigment and chlorophyll is responsible for uh, trapping the sunlight and that's how it make the sunlight available for photosynthesis and that is why chloroplast is also called kitchen of the cells so chloroplast is a site for photosynthesis where chlorophyll absorbs the sunlight and carry out photosynthesis and hence it is called kitchen of the cell due to the presence of chlorophyll it also imparts green color to different parts of the plant like green leaves uh, young stems so young stems also you will see that they are green in color so it's all because of uh, the presence of chlorophyll which are present in chloroplast chloroplast by the process of uh, photosynthesis you know that it releases oxygen and utilizes carbon dioxide so it it takes the carbon dioxide and releases the oxygen and it is also a site where starch is uh, stored other than that uh, you will also find that chloroplast is because it is related to photosynthesis that means it is related to the synthesis of energy as well right so atp in one or the other form it is also formed inside the chloroplast so these are certain functions of chloroplast and let's just see uh, how it looks like what what is the structure and what are the components of a chloroplast uh, is present so we'll focus on the structure now so as you can see this is this is a diagrammatic representation of chloroplast where you can see like mitochondria it consists of double membrane like mitochondria it had is ha it had its own dna it has its own 70s type of ribosome it has certain disc like structure it has a thylakoid it has lamellae and all such things so let's just see one by one the functions of these parts which are present in chloroplast 
So if we talk about forms of chloroplasts like mitochondria, they also vary in shapes. They can be spherical, they can be discoidal, they can be oval, even they can be filamentous. So chloroplast also present in different forms based on so chloroplast also consists of different shapes and if we talk about size of chloroplast it is 4 to 10 micrometers uh, in long axis means length wide it is 4 to 10 micrometers now a second thing is about its components so like mitochondria it is also a double membrane structure where the membranes forms the boundary of the organelle it has its outer membrane and inner membrane and uh, outer membrane it's smooth and freely permeable to smaller molecules whereas inner membrane like plasma membrane it is also semi permeable in nature and it is rich in proteins such as carrier proteins so with the help of carrier proteins molecules which are needed to enter into the uh, into the chloroplast or leaves the chloroplast this this um, incoming and outgoing processes can take place so that is a function of carrier protein if we talk about matrix of a chloroplast, it is colorless and granular. And the matrix of chloroplast is basically called a stroma. The stroma, it consists of various substances like it has its circular double-stranded DNA, it has RNA, 70S ribosomes, as in case of mitochondria also we have seen, and a lot of different molecules are present. And stroma is a site for dark reaction of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis, it's not a single step process. It's a multi-step process where different phases are present. So one phase is there, uh, one phase we call dark phase or the light independent reaction of photosynthesis. So it is the stroma where dark reactions are basically going on. Next thing is about lamellae. Now various other structure, tubular structures are visible in chloroplast. So, the lamellae it is present in various forms. First variety is thylakoid. When we talk about thylakoid, these are membrane bound compartment which consists of chlorophyll. So, certain disc like structure you will be able to see in, in the diagrammatic representation of chloroplast where you will see that uh, these membrane bound compartments are thylakoid. And it is the thylakoid where chlorophylls are present. And hence, each thylakoid they are capable of trapping the sunlight okay the thylakoids they are not arranged singly they are arranged closely or they lie together in piles or in the form of uh, stacks so thylakoid they stack one on the other and they form granum a single stack is called granum and so many stacks are present in chloroplast so all the stacks together called grana and it is the grana where chlorophyll present means each thylakoid chlorophylls are present that means each grana consists of chlorophyll so we consider grana as a site for light reaction of photosynthesis where sunlight is needed for the formation of ATP so it is the grana which is uh, responsible for light reaction of photosynthesis and if you'll notice in the picture you will see that each uh, grana or all the granas are connected uh, with each other with certain uh, in membranous tubules and these membranous tubules are called stroma lamellae so that's all about the structure of chloroplast we have seen the structure we have seen the function we have seen its basic point okay so Thank you so much.